Good evening. This is Eva from SokaMom.com. I'm a little in the dark right now, new computer and strange lighting. So trust me, it's me. I know you can't really see me, but it's me. Tonight we are doing Caribbean Book Club chat and we have the author of The Jumbies. It's probably backwards for you. Um, it's a beautiful book cover and it's by Tracy Baptiste. It is a uh, fiction for it's fiction for young people and um, it's pretty amazing so first Tracy welcome and can you tell us a little bit about yourself yes thank you thank you for having me Eva um, I am I was born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago and I moved to the United States when I was 15 years old but by then I had decided already that I was going to grow up and be a writer you know um, because, you know, I had all these great books and I wanted to see my name on the front of a book cover, like, you know, <laughs> every other book nerd that I knew. Um, the thing though was <laughs> I really, I really loved fairy tales. Uh, I read a lot of fairy tales. I read a lot of Grimm's fairy tales and I heard all these Jumbie stories growing up, you know, and there were no books about Jumbies. And so I figured, all right, I will just have to grow up and write these books for myself. <laughs> so, right. Uh, right. So then um, it was many years later that I came across a book of um, folk tales from around the world, which I actually have. Hold on. I love a show and tell. This is the teacher <laughs> in me. So I found this thing here, and it has okay. some folk tales from the Caribbean. And I found this one called. The Magic Orange Tree, which is from Haiti. And I thought mm -hmm. it, it's sort of a Cinderella story. And I thought, oh, I can use that and put my jumbies in it and, you know, tell the story. So, and that's what I did. Right. And it's very much a Cinderella story. I really happen to love Cinderella stories. It was around a time when I was collecting Cinderella stories from around the world. And this one being from Haiti, I felt, you know, real kinship with it. And um, yeah, but I, you know, I, I like some sort of scary stuff. And so I gave Cinderella some mm -hmm. jumbies to have to deal with. <laughs> so, so what age group would you say that this book is a target for? Because as I was reading it, I'm going to be honest, I got a little nervous, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, wait a minute, I'm looking around like, you know, Who's in the trees? Who's <laughs> I, was, I was reading it in the car, like right next to the woods, and I'm looking at it like, mm, I don't know. Age group, would you say that this is targeted for? It's actually for kids ages eight and up. Um, okay. It depends on how adventuresome your eight-year-old is. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to think about you know how scary they like to have their things the thing is i find that kids like the scary stuff more than the adults do like they're like totally into it and like are totally fine with it so i've had friends who've read this to um and with their kids as young as seven i would not recommend it for anything younger than that for sure because it is scary it is a scary story you know, there are, um, it is a, it is an action adventure, which is really great because, you know, a lot of boys really love it because of all the action and all the fighting. But um, for guys that are younger than seven, seven and under, I would not really recommend it. Yeah, kids definitely like the scary stuff more than the adults. And I find that um, parents get nervous, you know, about sharing some of the more scary things with the kids, but the kids are totally into it and like are totally fine with it. Um, cause I, I did, I've been doing, um, some school visits, which I love to do cause I was a teacher and, um, you know, anytime I talk to even like a third grade class where the kids are eight and nine years old, they're, they're like into way more scary stuff that I'm even, <laughs> than I'm even talking about. Like sometimes they're like scaring me a little bit, the kinds of things that they come up with. Cause you know, we talk about all the stuff that they know. Mm -hmm. about different kinds of creatures and um you know before i introduce them to jumbies I, you know i'm trying to find the commonalities between jumbies because of course a lot of american kids don't know these creatures 
And so, you know, so we're talking about the, right. the, the, the scary stories that they know, and they're literally scaring the pants off of me while I'm standing in front of the classroom. So, <laughs> um, so they can definitely, <laughs> they can definitely handle it. And, and sometimes, yeah, a lot more than, than the adults can. But I have to tell you a funny story. When I was writing this, I did not realize that it was, or that, or that it would be considered horror. Like I had no idea. I was just like, <laughs> oh, this is just kind of what I grew up with. Oh, it's horror. Like my agent said that. She's like, yeah, it's sort of a horror story. And I was just like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's not horror. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, my, bed it's like my bedtime stories. What are you talking about? <laughs> she was Man. like. When you were growing up, when did you start to hear the stories? When what what were what were the warnings that came with the uh, stories of Jumbies? Well, um, I, I I can't pinpoint an exact time that I started hearing about them, but I feel like I I was always hearing about them because you know in Trinidad people talk about Jumbies as if you know they're your next door neighbor or you know, it's that girl that your cousin's dating or, you know what I mean? It's just <laughs> kind of part of the regular conversation. And um, one of the things that I knew for sure, and I know that a lot of people in Trinidad still do this, which is if you are a child and you hear your name called at night, you don't respond. Um, you don't say yes, wow. or you don't answer. What you do is you say, did somebody call me? Or you go, you find your parent and you ask them if they called you because that's the Dwen, that's the one with the mm. backward feet um, trying to call you out into the night. And then you, you, you know, you come under its spell and they lure you into the forest and mm -hmm. you are never heard from again. But people still do that. Um, I was having a conversation oh with a grown woman um, the other day and she was saying, oh, my gosh, I still don't answer when people, when I hear my name called at night. Like, I look around to see <laughs> who is calling before I respond. And, yeah, the Duans are definitely, wow. for me, the scariest ones. Because, because you know, not, it's just, just, not just the little backward feet, but, um, you know, they're, they're small and they're cute. They're, like, toddler size. They look like yeah. babies. And, and they're not. They're, like, dangerous. Right, right. <laughs> oh, look, I have. Somebody made some duens for me. I don't know if you can see. Can you see See their little, oh, I'm gonna... the little hat? Oh, my God. See. Mm. And it has a little backward feet. And look, it's mm. got a little naked see. bottom. See the little naked butt? <laughs> they're cute. That is too funny. They're cute, but they're they're deadly. So watch out. <laughs> you know that is not up to me um you know uh, that is something that can happen i suppose but um it's not something that i have pursued myself i think that um if somebody were to come to me and ask me um you know whether or not you know we wanted to do a television show or a movie or something like that um you know i, I would definitely consider it but it's my intention was not my intention was to make a, a book. My intention was not really to um, to make it into some other kind of multimedia format. But um, you're not the first person who has asked me that. So um, maybe it is something that bears exploring. I actually have already written a sequel to it. Um, I have not sent the sequel to my editor yet um, because when it was bought, you know, we did offer them a sequel immediately and they really weren't sure what the response was going to be to this because, I mean, it is a very uniquely Caribbean story and this is an American market. And I think, you know, it's really difficult to know ahead of time whether or not this is something that will sell. Um, so they were not interested in, um, they were not interested in seeing a sequel at that time. They really wanted to wait until, you know, like the first few weeks of sales and, and then see. And since it has been doing well, of course, now, now they want to see the sequel. So... <laughs> Um, so I do have it. 
um, sort of stashed away somewhere. I, I need to work on it. it. It's just a draft. So it's not something that I would send to them in its current state. But yeah, I think I think we definitely will have a sequel to this one at some point. I don't know about it being a long running series. That I'm not sure about. Um, I definitely have ideas for um, one and possibly two more books. Um, I think it might be a fun series, but it's not how I thought about it. And so maybe I do need to think about it in a different way to if we wanted to do a series, but it's definitely something that I would have to have a conversation with uh, my editor about and, um, and see how that goes. As far as marketing in the Caribbean, um, that we haven't sold the foreign rights to it. So it's possible that it could be a book uh, and, and books that tend to come out in the Caribbean tend to be, um, tend to go through England to through British publishers. So we'll have to see um, how that goes. However, in Trinidad, because you know that's where I'm from, a lot of people do know about it there and are buying it from the US market. So, um, so there is that, but I, it's, it doesn't have, I don't think a very, there's not a large marketing push to um, people from the Caribbean who are in the Caribbean. There's a very large marketing, marketing push to people who are expats um, and are living in the United States. So we'll see how that goes. We're also getting a lot of attention, I think, because, you know, there is a very large push now about um, diversity in children's literature. And so, uh, you know, people are really looking for different kinds of stories from different places. And, um, you know, so people who are even not from the Caribbean are interested in it because they're seeing that there is a dearth of these kinds of stories and they want to have more of it. Um, I actually have a couple upcoming events. There is uh, Word, which is a Caribbean book festival. It's going to be in Brooklyn at Medgar Evers College on June 6th. Um, that is, I think, my next event. Um, there is another event on June 14th in Paramus, New Jersey. And that is the Books New Jersey event. I'll be talking about it there. Um, uh, I do have some summer events, not that many because of course, you know, it's the summer and people are traveling. Um, but in the fall, um, people who are in Baltimore, um, I will be at Kidlet Con in Baltimore, which is on October, I wanna say October 9th and 10th. And so I will also be talking about the book there. Um, those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Um, this last weekend I was in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and um, there was actually supposed to be a Queen's Book Festival this year, but I think they canceled it. But I think, I think that's it for now. I did this field guide and so the, the purpose of the field guide was to introduce um, jumbies to non-Caribbean people. Um, it did not really occur to me to do anything with the vocabulary, um, you know, but I think there is a, an online Caribbean dictionary, which people can probably use to find out some more information. Um, and um, I would, you know, I would definitely go there. I This is not a fairy tale that really has a moral or, or a warning per se. Um, so in that way, it's not a typical kind of fairy tale, but I think it has the same kinds of themes of fairy tales of being resourceful, um, the same kinds of issues with, you know, um, having, you know, somebody on the outside who is not quite what they seem 
and having to find ways to overcome these problems. So I think it, those are the similarities. But as for an overarching moral, um, I mean, I do say something, and, and I was very purposeful of, of, on what I wanted to say about post-colonialism or decolonialism and uh, talking about the other, you know, like the um, people who are not like you, you know, what is it that you want to um, bring to the table about that? If there's, you know, some kind of, if there's some group that is not quite like you, but you are sharing the same space, you know, what is that about? So um, I think that's something that I did broach in the book in a gentle way, I think. Um, but also I think for this age group in an important way that hopefully will spark some um, discussion. The bravest thing I have ever done? I don't know. Um, I was very ill um, a few years ago. And I think facing that was really difficult, especially facing it um, with my children watching it. Um, I, I think that probably was um, really hard to do. And it's something I still like, don't think about it too much because it was really difficult. Um, but you know, you know, when you're, when you're ill and you're like really, really ill and you don't know how things are going to turn out and you have, you know, very small children looking at you, it can be really difficult. <laughs> so that probably, um, is like one of the bravest things I, I had to do was to just sort of plow through that and, you know, keep on, keep up, you know, keep my chin up and especially, you know, for the kids so that they weren't freaking out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think that, um, uh, I, I don't, uh, you know, there are things that happen that I just don't know what to attribute it to. Like, I, I don't know, um, you know, uh, my mother is a very religious person and I am less so. And so I don't know um, some things. I've, I've had things happen to me that I, I can't really explain. And, and so I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's spirits and I don't know if it's um, jumbies and I don't know, you know, what I can attribute it all to. But um, I have definitely had some weird things happen to, to me that are just inexplicable. You know, whether you're a child or you're adult, the um, advice is not different. My advice for anybody who wants to be a writer is um, you have to actually sit down and write. <laughs> That's the thing you have to do. You gotta, you know, it's called butt in chair. You sit down and you write as much as you can. The other thing that you have to do is you have to read a lot. You know, if you're not a reader, it makes getting to the point of being a good writer much harder and longer. Um, so reading is sort of a, a good way to advance yourself more quickly because you see what people are doing that are great and you see the things that people do, are doing that are not great. Um, and you learn very much by, by writing, um, by reading, sorry. Um, so that would be my advice to read a lot and to write a lot. It is super important that it looks great. Um, I really lucked out on the cover. Um, the cover design was by, I think, Let's see, uh, Vivian Tu did the cover art. And the cover art is great because it goes all the way across and there's like, it's hard to see it on, I mean, if you have the book in front of you, you can see that it has these funny little hats. You see, you see the little Dwen hats here and the little pointy hats that the Dwens wear. And they, she has it going all the way across and it looks like this great, mystery and it looks like this great um, adventure and it looks spooky so the, the cover art is beautiful and um, Carla Weiss did 
the font and and uh, the jacket design and and they did a great job so it, it helps a lot that the book looks appealing because people of course will pick it up and um, for me it's just it's a dream come true because I wanted to have this book when I was a little girl so to have it in my hand right now feels incredibly special I do make announcements on my blog, uh, which is on tracybatiste.com. And I will say, you know, what's coming up next and what I'm doing next, or, um, you know, on my Facebook page or on Twitter or places that I will say, you know, this is what I'm doing and, you know, here's what's going on and I'm working on X or Y or Z. Uh, the story that I'm working on right now is actually not the sequel. I have the sequel, it's sort of sitting um, on the computer waiting for me to come back to it and, and edit it. But at the moment, what I'm doing is um, a completely different story that has nothing to do with Jumbies, has nothing to do with the Caribbean. Um, it's just a science fiction story that I happen, I, I really love sci-fi. So um, I decided to try my hand at that. So, so far, all of the novels I have done have been different genres. So my first novel was realistic fiction. This one is a uh, middle grade sort of horror slash fairy tale. And the one I'm working on now is uh, sort of a futuristic sci-fi. So it's, um, I, I, I seem not to have a, uh, a particular uh, box that I can fit into, which might be good or might be not great. Here's the great thing about this book. Okay. So if you are somebody who likes um, scary stories and you are somebody who likes adventure stories and you like like really strong gutsy heroes, and um, your kid likes that as well. And you also, also like uh, your story set in, um, you know, places that are different from where you are. Um, or if you're from the Caribbean, you want to see stories that reflect your own culture. This is definitely the book for you. Um, and I think that, you know, most kids eight and up will get a real kick out of it. I've had a lot of really fantastic responses from children um, who, both boys and girls, who really get a big kick out of this story and how exciting it is and how thrilling it is and the fact that, you know, something is always happening in the story that makes them want to continue reading. Um, one of my friends, another author, um, her son is autistic and um, she said like he, he literally could not put this book down, <laughs> which made me feel like really good because, you know, you don't, you, you know, to grab a child's attention, especially a, ch a child whose attention is often very much diffused, it makes me feel like I did my job. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Eva.